Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. Today, the show is about Emmanuel, the mentor of Chico Xavier, and his amazing book, 2,000 Years Ago. And to help us go through the many beautiful highlights of the book and the legacy of the Spirit Emmanuel, we have here with us Joka Daladon from England. He's going to be here telling us a lot about the movement in England and much about Emmanuel and the beautiful highlights of the book. It's all about our lives. It's the saga of a Roman senator that really found the Messiah and who isn't in that search of their own selves. Before we actually get to the interview and the conversation, we'd like to share with you that last week we were here talking about the terrible disaster that happened in Newtown, Connecticut, with the children who were shot and the young men who actually lost his mind and his heart in that very moment. And people nowadays are discussing about gun control. Gun control is really important, but is it really the root of the matter? We doubt. We truly understand that there is a big social problem happening. It's about family ties, relationships, and it's also about how we interact with one another in our society. It's much about the way we deal with mental health. Mental health is really our system in the United States is in need of a change, of a shift, and spiritism can contribute much to helping out and reaching out to mental health patients. But if you are out there thinking about the first measure, which is gun control, and we agree we need to take care of that end, we'd like to share with you another type of gun control. One that actually was shared by Chico Xavier, the Brazilian medium, when he talked about a different type of gun control. And we ask, where should gun control begin? So once Chico Xavier talked about a mental gunshot he received from a colleague after warning him of something that he was doing wrong. Not liking what Chico Xavier had said, this man projected a thought filled with hatred toward Chico. By God's mercy, friends of the spiritual world relieved the shock of that mental gunshot, and yet Chico Xavier felt a strong pain on the shoulder for several days. As Emmanuel says, thought is a measurable force. You can read more about this very case in a book that, unfortunately, is only in Portuguese yet. But for those who have access to it, it's the book Lindos Casos de Chico Xavier by the author Hamiro Gama. There he describes the whole case, and you can get a hold of it and share the news that we can start it, we spiritists, because authorities and the government, supported by us, will take care of their part. But how do we actually control these mental gunshots? Because we are probably not there yet as a whole society. Well, this is one of the news we want to share with you. The other one is about, people were talking about yesterday of the end of the world, December 21st, 2012, and the world didn't end. Thank God, and it won't. And we know we wouldn't make sense in a million years for the world to end like that. And we got to know, as you can read in some of the articles in the New York Times, that the date actually represents the end of an era, an era that was marked at the end of a 5,125-year cycle, as told by the Mayan calendar. So one cycle ends and another one begins. And you may be asking, what is this all about? And we can tell you, Spiritism is here to explain things to us. If you go to the Gospel According to Spiritism, Chapter 3, 
Ellen Kardec publishes messages by the spirit author St. Augustine in 1862 when he was already telling us about the different planets, the different worlds, the different dimensions, and their levels. Planets are schools, and they progress as much as their people because it depends on the population's progress as well. And we have worlds such as the Earth. Until yesterday, officially, it was the world of trials and atonement. And we are just at the dawn, as the spirit doctor Bizerdi Menezes mentioned through Divaldo Franco. And now, quoting from the very book, The Gospel According to Spiritism by Allan Kardec, the spirit St. Augustine tells us about the world we are just stepping in. It's a regenerative world. And you may be asking, what is this? A regenerative world, according to St. Augustine, is a world of transition between a world of trials and atonement and a world of bliss. That doesn't mean we're going to live in a world where happiness exists all along. But the repentant soul finds peace and repose on them and ends up purifying itself. Of course, on such worlds, humans are still subject to the laws that govern matter. Their humanity still experiences your sensations and desires, but it is free of the muddled passions that enslave you. On regenerative worlds, there is no longer the pride that renders your heart silent, the envy that tortures it, and the hatred that suffocates it. The word love is written on every brow, a perfect equity governs social relationships and all acknowledge God, endeavoring to evolve toward Him by following His laws. You can read more about this very message in the Gospel According to Spiritism, item 17 of chapter 3. Bottom line, dear listener, right now, our world has changed, if we could say in this way, it has just changed. The fees we are paying when we drive in a toll road, meaning if you were paying 75 cents, now you're paying $1. What does that mean? It means that right now, we are up to new standards. The world is vibrating and requires that we comply to higher levels of God's laws. If before we were allowed to go through in whatever way we wanted, thinking nobody's seeing, nobody's going to reprimand us, etc. Now in our planet, the law of love is being applied at higher levels. That doesn't mean you're going to be punished or I will be punished. It means that we'll be asked to step up to higher standards. That's all that it means. It means that right now, as St. Augustine says in this very message, it is a world where the passions need to go away. Where our hearts rid ourselves of pride, of envy and hatred. Where love is written in our forehead. This is pretty much what is going to happen. A perfect equity that is going to govern social relationships. That is the reason why. We have chosen this very book 2,000 years ago to symbolize very much our very journey in this world of regeneration. We want to know what to do, how to come out of it in a most beautiful way. Read this book 2,000 years ago by the Spirit Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. It is a novel that really represents the journey of all of us. And to understand more about it, we have here with us Jocka Deladon, a friend who is going to share with us the insights because he actually coordinated the Spiritist play on the book in 2006 in England, the United Kingdom, and he has a lot to share with us. For now, we would like to remember you that we have web radio bizarre online at spiritist.com, a web radio that offers programs in three languages. Portuguese, English, and Spanish. And Kardec Radio is there, either live 
or retransmitted three times a day, every day of the week. It is amazing. And for you who will be out there celebrating Christmas, Cardiac Radio is going to offer to you an important encounter, an encounter with the Messiah. December 24th at 6 p.m., join us live. And you know, if you join us live and give us a call to Kardec Radio, we are going to deliver to you a beautiful CD, Enlightening Message. We hope you're going to enjoy the show today and keep your hearts high in hope, courage, and joy. As Jesus told us all along, the trademark of the follower of the good news. We'll be right back after the break, and after this beautiful message, we'll be right back. Imagine how you would have felt if you had seen that star lighting the way. Turn to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be charity and spiritual education in building a world of peace. 150 years of the gospel according to spiritism. For more information, please visit www.the number7cem.org. 
www.thepeacefulpresence.org. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. A new great book and tool for kids and educators. The children's book, Our Father by the Spirit May May, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is available for purchase at www.edisayofamerica.com. Buy your copy today. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, here we are with our dear friend Jolka Deladon. He is a music teacher. He was also the founder of the Solidarity Spiritist Group in London in 1997. He was also the president of the British Union of Spiritist Societies for seven years between 2001 and 2008. He was the general coordinator of the amazing play 2,000 years ago, based on the very book 2,000 years ago by the Spirit Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. And he also founded the choir Souls in Harmony. So we have a lot to talk to Joca, and we are really, really, as we are just around the corner of Christmas, we are really, really blessed that you're here with us, Joca. Thank you so much for being with us at Kardec Radio today. Thank you, Vanessa. It's a great pleasure to be here. So, Joca, you born in a spiritist family, right? Yes. My, my, my grandfather was a spiritist, and he, he actually founded a spirit center in the city of Curitiba, in the south of Brazil. Mm-hmm. And so my mom used to attend this, this, this center since she was really young. Mm-hmm. And even she used to go to the mediumship meetings. But uh, later on, when she got married, to my father. My father was Catholic, so she had to kind of put aside her beliefs for a while. Mm-hmm. But she managed to, to kind of handle some some of the spirit book to me, which I read uh, more out out of curiosity because I was I was young at the time. And then when I moved to to UK in the early 90s, through through a friend, who was the director of a spirit center in London. Mm. And he invited me to go there to attend oh. his group. I attend his group. Uh-huh. So in a couple of months, I was already, um, I was really involved in the group. Mm-hmm. And six or seven months later, I founded Solidarity Spirits Group. Because mm. it's interesting, Jaca, even though you were born in a spiritist family, some people think, oh, it's just like, oh, you're born in a spiritist family, then you're automatically a spiritist. Not necessarily because you made a choice yourself if you wanted to embrace it. Most importantly, if you wanted to really be active and and take the passive seat into a more active role, into, for example, as you said, founding a spiritist group, which is not easy, going to the position of um, the chairman of the British Union of Spiritist Society, especially in outside Brazil, where the movement is still pioneering. Can you tell us then more about the, the progress, the beautiful progress of the spiritist movement in the UK? Because recently we interviewed Janet Duncan when she talked about Incarnation is Not a Holiday. It was quite a success at Kardec Radio. So he, she mentioned about uh, Elsa Haas's current work and so much that you've done as well. So can you tell us more, and to the listener, how much the pro, the, the movement has been progressing in the United Kingdom? Yeah, the, the spirits movement in the UK, I think is going really well at the moment. Growing, um, I would say, very steadily. We see more and more groups being founded, small groups, study groups, different towns. I think, if I'm not wrong, at the moment we have about 25 groups in the UK. If you see, like uh, 10 years ago, we had uh, half of it, or even less than that. Wow. So the last, I think, 10 years has grown really, really steadily and intensively. Hmm. And it's not only about numbers, but I believe that the spiritists in the UK are more matured. Mm-hmm. We see that um, the movement are more integrated into the British society. Uh-huh. Because, uh, since we became a recognized charity, because BUS in 1997 became a registered charity, uh-huh. registered by the Charity Commission, which is this uh, organization that accepts and regulates all the charities in the UK. 
Oh, I see. So it's what we call in the United States. It became like an, a non-profit organization. So that status gives it uh, more flexibility to so many, uh, many levels. But why do you think uh, it has happened? Because majority of people are still Brazilians, which is not a problem. But we've heard that many people are already doing the work in the English language. So what do you think happened that, you know, it has been disseminating at a larger extent in the United Kingdom? I think more and more people are looking for, you know, trying to feel that emptiness inside themselves. And more recently, we see more and more British people, or I would say no Brazilian people, mm -hmm. going to the groups. Mm -hmm. And this recognition by the Charity Commission and also some congress that we organized and invited some British psychiatrists and physicians also helped to, to integrate more the, the movement into the British society. So people are more aware of the spiritist movement in UK now than it used to be. You're right, because I remember going there last year in the spiritist medical meeting, and I've witnessed the presence of many other non-Brazilian attendees in the meeting. And not only that, but the year before, we found that many more people were interested um, and they are not necessarily Brazilians, though Brazilians still lead the efforts, which is like probably made to be that way. So, uh, talking about Brazilian, Jaca, mm -hmm. we know that Chico Xavier was just uh, recently awarded in Brazil the greatest Brazilian of all times. I know we spiritists do not care about the titles, but the recognition of the people in Brazil, the, the nation that Chico Xavier represents the best of Brazil, I would say this way, is really amazing. And uh, he was mentored by Emmanuel. Can you tell us a little bit about the mentor Emmanuel and the works he has been doing, he had done through Chico Xavier? As you said, Emmanuel is the spiritual guide of Chico Xavier. And we know the work of Chico Xavier and Chico Xavier's wonderful life as an example to, to all of us. You can just imagine how enlightened a spirit would be to, to be able to instruct Chico in such a, a wonderful mission of receiving so many books, over 412. Yeah. So you can just imagine how enlightened this spirit can be. Obviously, we know that uh, Chico received uh, books from other spirits as well, like Andrea Louise and, and others. Mm -hmm. But Emmanuel was always there kind of supervising and, and checking. And we know that it was impeccable. And two mm -hmm. thousand ago talks about, you know, uh, the senator, Publio mm -hmm. one of uh, Emmanuel's incarnation here. So mm -hmm. he tells his own story. Mm -hmm. Because we see that uh, such enlightened uh, spirit mm -hmm. is not like all of us. Mm -hmm. And we see his gradual progress through the different books. Mm -hmm. the, the second book, 50 years later, tells about another incarnation of... of yes, uh, Jaca, we are going to give a short break, and before the break, we're going to listen to a short segment put together by Marco and Joyce Magalhães when they give us a short biography of Emmanuel. And after the break, we will continue this beautiful discussion about the novels of Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. The spirit of Emmanuel was the spiritual guide of Chico Xavier. While he helped Chico Xavier achieve this amazing task of psychographing over 400 books, Emmanuel also brought to us some very interesting points and knowledge about Jesus, about his teachings, about discipline, and so many other important things for our spiritual evolution. The spiritual Emmanuel presented to Chico Xavier for the first time in 1931 and from that point on, they continued this very, very close relationship of friendship, respect, work, trust, and above all, love. Throughout his novels, Emmanuel brought to us some important aspects of his previous incarnations. Emmanuel incarnated as the Roman Publius Lentulus Cornelius, and later on as Publius Lentulus Sura, which is the main character of the romance 2,000 years ago. At that time, Emmanuel, incarnated as Publius, showed himself of this noble, 
proud Roman who had a chance to meet Jesus. But at that time, he was not ready yet to understand who Jesus was, to understand how deep his teachings were. And although he had plenty of chances of studying it, understanding it, embracing this new idea of love and charity, he was still not able to do it because of his pride. Publius Lentulus disincarnated in the year 79 after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed the city of Pompeii. Approximately 50 years later, in the year 131, Emmanuel incarnated again, this time as Nestorio, a slave from Jewish origin who since the early ages of this existence accepted the concepts of Jesus and, and was faithful to this message of love brought by Jesus Christ. And he was able to keep his faith up to the last minute of this existence. And together with his son, which was also a slave at some point, was killed in one of the Roman circus. And, as he describes in the book, in a very, very dramatic scene, he's killed by poison arrows while praying for God. Shortly after that, around the year 217, he is incarnated on earth again, but this time as Quinto Vaho, but now a Roman that cultivated the ideas of liberty above everything else. Now he was able to solidify his faith in Jesus and understand all these new concepts of loving each other, of charity, of changing things, of evolution. His ideas now are clearly in conflict with the dominating ideas of the Roman Empire and as a consequence of multiple actions, he is again killed by decapitation. Approximately 11 years later, he incarnates again in the name, with the name of Quinto Celso, which again, since early ages, has an impressive memory, understanding, and intelligence. And, of course, with pure, solid Christian ideas. And one more time, defending those ideas, he is killed in the Roman circus, with only 14 years of age. His last described incarnation was in 1517, with the name of Manuel de Nobrega, during the time of Don Manuel I. In this incarnation, he had the same intelligence and strong faith. He then travels to Brazil and actively participated in the foundation of the city of Sao Paulo in the 25th of January of 1554, and continued in Brazil an important work through the dissemination of Christian principles. We will return to our program after these messages. Would you like to liberate yourself from your life struggles or to find inner balance? The Inner Journey CD has three beautiful visualizations that will help you bring harmony to your life. As Joanna D'Angeli tells us to, live in a way that you leave enlightening footprints in your pathway as if they were stars pointing out the pathway to happiness. To find this CD, go to the bookstore on the Spiritist Society of Baltimore webpage www.ssbaltimore.org that is www s s b a l t i m o r e dot o r g and start your inner journey today nourish your soul with kardec radio the international spiritist council is organizing and promoting the seventh world spiritist congress which will be held in havana cuba on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit www.7cem.org. And now we return to our program. All right, and we are back with our dear friend, Jocka Deladon, who is a music teacher. He is the founder of the Solidarity Spiritist Group in London, UK. He has been so active in the Spiritist Movement in the United Kingdom, 
that he actually took the chairmanship of the British Union of Spiritual Societies for seven years, and uh, he also coordinated the play of the book 2,000 years ago, which we were just talking about before the break. Jaka, you were talking about the novels that were written by Emmanuel through the medium Chico Xavier, but these novels are not simply, they're not fiction, they are actually true accounts of his own lives, and can you tell us more about how he progressed from life to life and from the first book 2,000 years ago into the upcoming books, changing scenarios in different reincarnations and showing how we progress. Yes, I think we need to, to understand that spirit is books and even a novel is, is not a it's not like an ordinary novel. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of a spirit book is, is different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's designed to entertain us. Although I have to say that sometimes you get so involved in the story that you might end up, you know, supporting some characters. <laughs> and, you know, That's true. <laughs> and making justice with your own mind. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like watching a film. Yeah. And even Chico, I don't know if you remember, but he once said that uh, uh, when he was receiving the book, sometimes he, he, he got involved in the story as well. Mm -hmm. And this uh, he, was not something that he, he supposed to do. And then Emmanuel kind of uh, tell him off in a way. <laughs> so sometimes we can we can help ourselves, but uh, you know, get involved in, in the story, which is, which is good. Mm -hmm. However, any spiritist book is designed to 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 show us to exemplify with real characters because those events really took place. Mm -hmm. Exemplify the journey of inner transformation. And enlightened that all of us is, is going through or we will go through. Mm -hmm. Some will go, you know, quicker and faster mm -hmm. through suffering, some through works of love. Uh, each one of us will, will progress differently at different pace. But it's important to know that the spirit book has, has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Simplify, you know, what we should do. You know, mm -hmm. in this book especially, uh, show us the law of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Both of us are involved. Everything we do, there is a, a repercussion. There is a, an effect. Mm -hmm. a so, Jaka, it's almost like we could say this book 2,000 years ago is a mirror image of the journey of majority of us on the earth, if not all, because as you're saying, the law of cause and effect. And it tells us that, for example, Emmanuel, as Chico Xavier's mentor, he also had this journey. So, uh, like many of the books by Andre Luis or Chico Xavier, it shows that the mentors, they were not born angels. Nobody is actually born an angel. You make yourself to that level, the angelic level, which pertains to a divine law, which is all of us, for all of us, the law of progress, right? Yeah, it's so it's such a comfort to know that because sometimes we see you know Chico and see other people so far away from us and Emmanuel. It's important to know that they they've gone through the same phases that we are going through. They just are advanced. They are ahead of us, but we'll get there eventually, depending on, on our own efforts. Mm -hmm. So it's very comforting. It is very comforting. It brings a lot of hope that. Uh, We'll get there as well, no matter how we are today in, in this book, 2,000 years ago. Emmanuel talks about, as you said, his life as a Roman senator, exactly at the time that Jesus was living on the earth in the flesh. What would you say are the main highlights of the book? That's a very tough question. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's such an amazing book. You're right. And I think it's really hard to, to select few highlights. But, but here we go. Let's try to, mm -hmm. to find some. I think the main focus here, of course, is, is Publius' inner transformation from a very proud and arrogant crew sometimes towards yeah. the, the, the people, not towards the his loved ones. ones. Yeah. yeah. Because he's, in some parts of the book, he's, he's quite generous. Yeah. He's, he's kind towards, you know. Uh, his wife in the beginning of the book, then everything changes, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the, the main focus is his 
inner renewal from this uh, proud and arrogant uh, senator mm -hmm. and be able in the end of the book to forgive <laughs> and, and, and to be you know humble enough to see that uh, he, he was the cause of all his suffering because in the end of the book he managed mm -hmm. find to forgive uh, Andre de Giora, who was the person who kidnapped his baby son Mark mm -hmm. and uh, raised his son uh, away from his family of course secret. as a slave right as a slave mm -hmm. he changed his name to Italo mm -hmm. and in the end of the book when there is a, a rebellion in Rome Publio is, is captured by this mm -hmm. group of rebellions mm -hmm. This Andre of Gioras is the commander of this group, and he ordered his slave Italo to burn Publius' eyes without knowing that he was blinding his own father. Mm -hmm. And Publius also had no idea what was going on. <laughs> After that, of course, the Roman soldiers run in and they arrest uh, Andre of Gioras and they kill Italo. <laughs> and um, after this event, Publio requested a meeting with Andrea of Joras because Andrea of Joras will be uh, executed. Mm -hmm. And then is when Andrea of Joras tells Publio about the kidnap, mm -hmm. who was who was Italo, was actually Marcos, Publio's son. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrea of Joras asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All that happened before and... Uh, because Publio was already a different person, he managed after, you know, an a inner conflict, an inner battle within himself to forgive Andrea Joras and to, to become a, a new person. Mm -hmm. Kind of a landmark of, on his life because he was able to forgive someone that was not from, from his own blood. That's mm -hmm. something unacceptable until that point. So exactly. Very uh, unforgettable moments. Okay. Yeah, you're right because it's a uh, he was overcoming his own inner difficulties, and that's the hard part for all of us. So you also see the book as a a way to inspire us. We're almost at the end of the year. We're about to to think about Christmas and the meaning of the coming of Jesus to the earth, etc. So do you see also this book being a way of Emmanuel sharing, if I could come around my own difficulties and limitations and transform myself, you, the reader, can do the same. Definitely. Although each one of us has our own journey, uh, I think we can see aspects of each of the characters in ourselves. We can reflect our own struggles and trials in our daily lives, like Publio, like the other characters, like Livia, even the, you know, the, the mean characters, mm -hmm. like Uvia. You can see elements in our own personality. <laughs> so we see that, uh, as you said, it's like a mirror image of our own lives. Mm -hmm. and inspire us to reflect in our own lives and take the steps that we need to, to better ourselves morally. You know, I think this story 2,000 years ago is so modern because we see all this kind of, you know, the, the, the corruption, the intrigue, the jealousy. On the other hand, we can see the, the loyalty, you know, strong friendship and humility of the first uh, Christians. So it's amazing. It's like mm -hmm. we, the story is, is being telling, you know, today. Mm -hmm. It's a different story, I think. Yeah, it, it, the events of the book, as you say, it's amazing what you said, the psychological analysis of the book. We can find bits of ourselves in the characters of the book. And also, as you mentioned about the events in the book, uh, it's so up to date with the things that are happening around that we could get to many teachings in the book. But, Jacques, we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we're going to get to the climax of the book. Publius Lentulus, the senator, meet with Jesus, okay? Okay. We will return to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. 
The newest edition of The Medium's Book by Alan Kardec is now available. Purchase your copy online or via your ebook reader. Simply go to www.edicifamerica.com today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Spiritism for Everyone, the online study of the Spirit's Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Spiritism for Everyone meets every Wednesday evening and Saturday morning using the latest technology in web conferencing. You can join in from any computer in the comfort of your home or office, no matter where you are in the U.S. or the world. Spiritism for Everyone is open, free, and requires no registration. To access the web live meetings, go to www.spiritus.us. Spiritism for Everyone is a program of the United States Spiritist Council. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are back with one of the main highlights of the book, 2,000 Years Ago, by Emmanuel, the mentor of the medium, Chico Xavier. You can get to know more about the book by going to abcofamerica.com or at Amazon.com to buy your copy and read it. But if you want to read the ebook format, you can also buy it online. Or, as we just got to know on the behind the scenes of Kardec Radio, that you can actually watch the play that Jacques Adeladon coordinated in London between in 2005, uh, 2006. Uh, the Spirit is played 2,000 years ago. You can watch it on YouTube. Just type in Spirit is Play 2,000 years ago. You are going to be able to watch it. It's a masterpiece. As as you know, we're going to talk more with Jaka about how was it, Jaka, to put together, before we talk about Jesus, like how was it to put together the play? Because it's such an effort. You had so many people helping at the time. Can you tell us more about the making of of this amazing play? I think we had a lot of spiritual support to do that because it was a mission impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it took us about, uh, I think, nine to ten months to to put them together, or even more, I think, uh, even a year. But we had we've been lucky enough to to have the right people at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, during the, the rehearsals and the preparation, we had over 30 to 35 people involved. Not only actors, but people, you know, in the translation, people doing the the clothing and everything, everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we've been together for about nine months. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are lucky enough to, to have uh, Lucas Johnson who was um, a director, a quite experienced director in London. Mm-hmm. doesn't live in London anymore, but he was there at the time. Mm-hmm. So he kind of put everything together, was organizing as well, and we had a good space for rehearsals. And every Saturday we were there for, you know, about four hours every Saturday to, to put this together. So it was, was wonderful. Lucas space, the, the, of course, in the book, but he... He kind of adapts because mm-hmm. in any of the book is like um, is is Publio looking back mm-hmm. his life, regrettably looking back, seeing mm-hmm. everything that he's done, and then the first scene is the end of the book. Mm-hmm. Publio is old and blind, and uh, his daughter Flavia is blind as well, mm-hmm. and they have uh, Hanna, which is one of the Livia's Publio's wife's servant. Mm-hmm. Well, is best friend of Livia. She's quite important in the in the story as well. So it's, it's the end of the book, when the Mount Vesuvius, you know, erupted, mm-hmm. and and then they start to tell the story from that point onwards. And by the way, Zoka, when you mentioned about, when you were talking about the characters of the book and Livia, we know that the Livia and Emmanuel almost feel like soulmates. I don't mean it in the spiritual sense of the word because we know they were not created together, but in the sense that Emmanuel mentioned about those souls that reach the level of affinity, that they are so to one another. And we know through Chico Xavier's own words and close friends of Chico, 
it's already public in Brazil that Chico Xavier is the reincarnation of the character Flavia as the daughter of the Roman senator Publius Lentulus. Flavia was Chico Xavier and Emmanuel is the Publius Lentulus. And so mm-hmm. Livia and Hannah, they are virtuous hearts. Very they, much. Yeah. Right? They withstand slander and so much of... Almost like we see every day in our society, people who live and lead superficial lives and they really are true to family values and to the values of the spirit Mm -hmm. beyond the human pride and selfishness. Very much so, yeah. Her Journey is an amazing book as well. She's the wife of, of a very powerful man and is quite respectable good wife as you know she is humiliated ignored by by her husband because her her husband uh, prefer to believe in the in the false accusations of of other people mhm fulvia and Sulpicius mm-hmm. is um, a mm-hmm. roman officer mhm and these two characters, main characters, poison his mind, and he he ends up believing in them rather than his own wife. So Livia kind of suffer a lot, and she resigns to these uh, circumstances without any resentment, without any feelings of bitterness or revenge, inspired, of course, by the teachings of Jesus, because Hannah, her servant, introduced her to Jesus, uh, Jesus' teachings, and she's so touched by the teachings that she, she can, you know, withstand everything, everything. Because she knows that uh, everything that happens here is, is temporary. And um, towards the end of the book, um, after Jesus' death, when she goes to see one of the disciples, you now one of the Jesus followers, John of Cleos, where the Christians used to, to meet secretly in the catacombs. And Hannah and Livia got arrested. And then uh, Livia asked to change the clothing because she had the Roman clothing. And she wants to suffer like a, a simple woman, like, a, you know, not like a Roman wife. So mm-hmm. Hannah is spared because Hannah got the Roman clothing. And then Livia is sentenced to death along with the other Christians to be killed by the beasts in the in Roman circus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she, and she, she kind of do that, you know, without any fear. It, it's amazing to see these first Christians, you know, the, the courage and the strength that they had by by the faith that they, they had. Wonderful. And, of course, uh, Publio, when um, Livia was being killed by the uh, lion, was a festivity, so-called fest- Roman festivity, in honor of Publio Lentulus. He was about to receive his awards and honors, and he ended up witnessing his own wife being killed by the lions. It's shocking, right? I mean, the whole scene, it's, when you see the way Emmanuel writes this book, it's almost like you're watching the whole movie in front of you, and it seems that it's a fiction because it's almost like unbelievable that he's there to receive a, an award, basically, to be recognized as a great senator, and his very wife is taken as one of the Christians. I mean, it's it's so it, shocking, right? It is, it is. And he was he was a different man already because he forgave his wife, although his wife was, was innocent. Yeah, and he decided to give all his awards to her and uh, be on his knees and uh, beg for forgiveness. So he was a different man, but was too late because mm. she was already there. To be. But but Jaka, as you know, it reminds me of the passage with Jesus as we talk about one of the high points of the book, his encounter yeah. with Jesus. Before this all happened, he had an opportunity to meet Jesus, and it sounds like the moment in which. When Jesus was living, he also invited the rich man, the youngster, to come and follow him. And he said, okay, I'm going to go for the last run, and then I'll come back. And he had no time. He was killed in that last race. So it sounds so much alike. It's probably telling us that when you're invited to shift, don't postpone. Because I hear so many people saying, Oh, when I graduate, then I'll take care of other people. 
when I get married, then I'm going to be worried about what other people need. And then when the time comes, you really see you're taken by it. And he had his opportunity with Jesus in that very special moment that Jesus actually came along. Can you tell us more before we listen to the the excerpt of the way Jesus addresses senators' mm-hmm. inner turmoil? Can you tell us more why Jesus had come to talk to, and how did this encounter between Roman Senator Publius Lentulus and Jesus happened? Uh, Publius had a, a little daughter, and she was very ill. She had leprosy. Mm-hmm. Incurable. They try all the doctors, all the medicine of, of the time, and there is no, no solution, no cure for, for her faith. Publius then is persuaded by his wife to see Jesus because... The word of, of Jesus has been spread, especially the healing powers that Jesus had. People have been talking about that. Mm-hmm. And of course, Publio heard that. And persuaded by his wife, he go and secretly, because he didn't want to, to be seen with Jesus, because he was this powerful senator, he couldn't be seen with Jesus. So he goes secretly to meet Jesus to ask for the healing of his daughter. And so amazing because they could talk to each other, mm-hmm. could speak different languages. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could understand Jesus. They spoke, uh, Jesus spoke Aramaic, mm-hmm. spoke a different language, but he could understand perfectly. And also he mentioned the sensation of a dream, like he was dreaming. So it's the magnetic influence of Jesus as well. And of course the powerful message that Jesus had to him, saying that those powerful, you know, seemingly powerful symbols of pride and power, the Romans were were ephemeral, was illusory, that he was giving too much attention and importance to you know those temporary mm-hmm. paths. And he invites him to follow a different path. A path of humility, faith and love. And but uh, of course being proud as he was, he didn't take it. Mm-hmm. And and Jesus says his daughter is healed, actually cured, but not because of him, but because of his wife, because of faith of his wife, Livia, mm-hmm. because of the prayers of Livia and the faith of Livia. Mm-hmm. So Flavia was cured. And he actually go back home and he realized that she is really cured. But he doesn't accept that it was Jesus' mm-hmm. healing power. Uh, he, he thinks it's a coincidence because he's, he's too proud. But if you know, Jesus was, was the cause of, of um, their daughter's healing. Yes, you're right. And this encounter is so special, Jaca, that as you described it, it's so fulfilling. It's almost like we can hear the words being told to us. And after the break, our final comments with Jaca de Ladon. We will return to our program after these messages. For the first time ever, the book, Between Heaven and Earth, by the spirit André Luis, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is now in English. This is a novel that offers information about the relationship that exists in the activities of the spirit on the two planes of life. Purchase your copy today at www.edisayofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Now in English, the book Action and Reaction by the spirit Andrea Louise, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Buy your copy online or via your ebook reader. Go to www.edicei.com today. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit number 7 And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are just around the corner from Christmas Eve. And this is beyond giving gifts 
it's beyond the material part of it. It's about that inner encounter with Jesus. But not the Jesus man, not the Jesus. It's not important. It's not about the sectarian religion. It's about the Christ consciousness, God consciousness, because Jesus came here to lead us to God. It's God consciousness. That's what it is. Jaka, when we will listen to these words that Jesus said, he was prophetic when he said quite clearly that it would take millennia for the Roman senator to have another opportunity to work side by side with Jesus. And it actually happened because when he worked as a mentor through Chico Xavier, he was working directly with Jesus at the time. So it's quite prophetic. Yes, it is, it is. Yeah, we can see that uh, Jesus was was looking ahead. You could see in that uh, proud senator a very generous heart. And not only that, because if you really observe and analyze Publio, he has ideals. He wants to do the right thing. He has a division. He thinks that the, the, the people are different from the patricians. So all his family background hinder his own realization of his own progress. So, but he's got the deceit there. Actually, all of us got the seed. <laughs> we forget that Jesus even said that we are we are God. Yeah. We have this potential within ourselves to do everything that Jesus did. Mm-hmm. But we don't know how to access this inner strength, this uh, higher self within ourselves. We are too preoccupied with the, the material things this physical world, we don't don't see beyond this. Okay. And I think the book is an invitation to do that, to leave this pride and selfishness, our ego, and to see things beyond the matter, to see that we are eternal beings, we are spirit, mm-hmm. and we are just to learn. And every moment of our lives are opportunities to learn. Everyone that comes to our lives is not by chance. That's something to, to learn in that encounter. And the encounter with Jesus that the Publio had was, uh, was the greatest opportunity. And unfortunately, he, I wouldn't say he wasted his time, but he didn't take the message right away. But he took later on, like we, we all do. We sometimes mm-hmm. too slow to, to put into practice. But the seed is still there. And later on, it will flower. It will bloom. Mm-hmm. That is right. That is so beautiful the way you you set it out. So Jaka, for as you were talking about the the core message of Jesus, he said, "I came here for the sick, not for the healthy ones." And and he meant the healthy ones in the sense of those who don't need. So he doesn't bother those who are feeling fine, but to those who are in need of comfort. So for all of our listeners now. As we are just a few days away from Christmas, it's always so special, especially the year 2012 and this transition on the earth, not only this year, but these years that really mark the transition of our planet. Would you like to share your final thoughts and wishes to the listener? Sure. First, I would like to invite everyone to to read the book. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's such a wonderful lesson, especially now, as you said, that we approach Christmas. Mm-hmm. And in the Spirit's book, talks about pride and selfishness as, as our greatest barrier to our own happiness, to our own mm, fulfillment. So if we put this into, into practice, if we you know, see each other as really brothers and sisters in this universal family, knowing that we are here for a, a high purpose, that we don't belong here, that we are here just temporary. It's like uh, the words of Jesus. Be in the world, but not be of the world. Mm-hmm. Meaning that we are here to learn, but we don't belong here. Mm-hmm. So, even the frustrations of life, even the things that we, we think that we, we should get, they don't have that seriousness anymore, because we know that our lessons, everything that sometimes doesn't go the way that we think, it's still there a hidden message, a hidden teaching. And so we have to be humble enough to, to know that, to see this wonderful life that is around us. It's like a lake. Uh, someone already told me, we, we need to, to live this life like a lake. Everything that happens 
in the surface. It's just on the surface. Mm -hmm. But we need to be rooted in our spiritual being, in our higher self. In the depth of the lake, everything is calm, is serene. Because we know that everything is okay, that Jesus is in the command of everything. And uh, we are being look, looked after. Mm -hmm. Of course, as Christmas is approaching, I would like to, you know, wish all the listeners and you, Vanessa, a Thank you. blessed Christmas and uh, take the message of Jesus and in this book more than more than any other book, you know, touch mm -hmm. us deeply because we can see characters like ourselves and we see that we can do like Jesus did, like Emmanuel did. Mm -hmm. All within our power, within our own strength. That's true. Oh, thank you so much for the beautiful message, for being with us today and sharing this great news that there is so much more for us. And there is hope and there is always this caring, the providence of God. Thank you so much, Shaka. We wish you many blessings. Thank you, Vanessa. It's been a pleasure. We will return to our program after these messages. Enjoy this new release. We're born for love by the renowned Brazilian scientist and researcher on reincarnation, Dr. Anani Anzaradi. This novel describes one of the most extraordinary and genuine cases of reincarnation ever studied by Dr. Andrade's Brazilian Institute of Psychobiophysics Research in Sao Paulo State. Order your copy now at roundtable.uk at gmail.com or at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Spiritist Network, your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos, www.spiritistnetwork.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Want to find a good way to explain life after physical death to kids or teenagers? Check out the book, Message from a Teen in the Spirit World, by the spirit Nan Lucio and psychographed by Chico Xavier. In this book, a teenager named Carlos explains his impressions on the new life in the spirit realm with his discarnate relatives and new friends. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com. In the book, A Primer on Being Good by the Spirit May May, psychographed by the medium Shiko Shaviar, explains in simple language appropriate for children two paths in life, the path of good or the path of evil. God has granted us the freedom to choose either one. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Now we return to our program. Hello dear Kardec Radio listener, this is Marco Magalhães and welcome to the segment Spiritus in Your Life. As we are approaching the 25th of December, we decided to talk a little bit about Christmas and the real meaning of it. When we think about Christmas nowadays, the first two images that are going to appear in our minds are probably Santa Claus and Christmas tree. Those two symbols have very interesting stories. Santa Claus is based on a fusion of different traditions and some important figures in religion. Saint Nicholas, who lived between 270 and 343 after Christ, was a Greek priest from Myra. He was very famous for the secret gift giving and for a few miracles, including multiplication. And most people would agree that he is the basis of the figure of Santa Claus we have today. But the image that we have from Santa Claus today was mixed and transformed over and over time in different traditions and different societies, including 
some fusions with um, Nordic mythology. Sinterklaas, which is the Dutch tradition, was brought over by Dutch immigrants to North America. And this revival, and the revival of these traditions, especially after the publication of A Visit from St. Nicholas by Clement Moore in 1822, and then the republication entitled now The Night Before Christmas, really marked this revival of this tradition here in North America, which again continues to change every year. So if we look in history, the figure of Santa Claus really emerged in our society not more than 150 years ago, and it, it's dynamically changing every year, adapting, including new elements as the elves, the flying wagon, the reindeer, commercial brands, and completely changing the original idea of secret gift giving into a very, very commercially oriented image. The second symbol that is very well known in Christmas is the Christmas tree, which dates back from the time where people used to worship trees and then transformed itself into public displays of trees. The tree then was incorporated inside people's places, and that's when we start to have other institutions using the image of the tree to support their own beliefs. And that's exactly what happened when the Catholic Church incorporated the Christmas tree as an official symbol of Christmas. And that was followed by many other religions and governments throughout the world. We know that the date we're celebrating is not particular the date that Jesus was born, especially because in Spiritism we know that Jesus is the governor of our planet. He's been around even before our planet was created. So he was not born on the 25th. If we think about his incarnation on Earth, it's also not the 25th of December, as we have overwhelming historical data today to show that he was not born 2012 years ago, probably two or six years before that. And it was not on the December 25th. So the question for you now is, was Jesus born in your life? When was Jesus born for you? Based on a book, Psychograph by Chico Xavier, by the spirit of Vinicius. If we asked Mary of Magdala, when was Jesus born? She would probably answer, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It was once that his voice, so full of purity and holiness, awoke in me the feeling of a new life, with which I had never dreamed. If we asked, Francis of Assisi, he would answer, He was born on the day in the square of Assisi. I gave my bag, my clothes, and even my name to follow him unconditionally, knowing that he alone is the inexhaustible source of love. And we can go on and imagine that if we ask Peter, he would say that Jesus was born in the courtyard of the palace of Caiaphas. The night I denied him for the third time. It was then that my conscience awoke to real life. Paul of Tars. He would probably say that Jesus was born on Damascus Road, when surrounded by intense light that blinded me, I could see this serene and noble figure who wondered, So, so, why do you persecute me? And in the blindness I saw a new world, and I said, O oh Lord, what do you want me to do? In the same line, John the Evangelist would answer that Jesus was born on the day that my understanding, enlightened by his divine grace, allowed me to know that God is love. Mary of Nazareth would answer that Jesus was born in Bethlehem under the stars, which were foci of light, guiding the shepherds and their sheep in the cradle of straw. That was when I held him in my arms for the first time and felt that the promise of a new era through that boy was fulfilled, and that God sent him into the world to teach men the higher law of love. Similarly, if we ask Thomas when was Jesus born, he would answer that Jesus was born on that memorable day when he asked me to touch his wounds, and I was able to witness that death had no power over the Son of God. Only then I understood the meaning of his words, I am the pathway the truth, and the lie. Now, coming back to our own lives, I ask you again, when was Jesus born for you? When was Jesus born in your life? And actually, I can ask you now, was Jesus born for you? 
How many of you would say yes and give me a precise date of when was Jesus born? Or in other words, when did you open your heart and your minds to the message of love that the Divine Master brought to us? When did you open the doors of your soul to Jesus? Because this is the day that we should celebrate Christmas. And if you understand this message, we celebrate Christmas every single day. Now we're going to finish with a message by the Spirit of Joanna de Angelis that says, You will feel that Jesus, choosing to live a humble existence among men, sitting in comparable joys, is now born in your heart to inform you that every day is Christmas for those who love him and want to become a living messenger to the blind and suffering in the world. Thank you very much, my friends, and Merry Christmas, and God bless us. Hello, dear Product Radio listeners, and welcome back to the Spiritist Moment, where we seek to inspire one another through the Spiritist literature. We are continuing to study Part 3 of the Spirits book by Alan Kardec, specifically the Law of Reproduction. Let us not be deceived by that particular divine law. Perhaps we think, well, I know all about reproduction. I don't really need to listen to those minor details. But it's very interesting because the divine laws teach us and educate us as to how we should be living our lives and connecting with God, finding our true happiness through these laws. So it's interesting, the section we're going to be discussing today is the obstacles of reproduction. And what comes to our minds, and perhaps to the many minds of our listeners, modern day things such as birth control, and other methods to prevent pregnancy. Is this an obstacle to reproduction? Well, Kardec is very wise and the spirits are so kind when they educate us that in question 694, which is the question we'll start out with today, when Kardec asks the spirits what should be thought about means that are meant to prevent reproduction with a view to satisfying sensuality, the spirits answer, it proves the predominance of the body over the soul and demonstrates how deeply Humans are immersed in matter. So it makes us reflect. First, we have to come to the conclusion within ourselves, where is our predominance? And what is our intentions behind doing what we're doing? Because in question 693A, the spirits educate us. And they tell us that we may regulate reproduction according to our needs, but we should not hinder it unnecessarily, meaning... We shouldn't abuse it, and the spirits tell us that. We should not abuse that, that which God has granted to us. But we are different from the animals, as they tell us in question 693a, and throughout the spiritual literature. We are different for many reasons. But one, we have intelligence, and we have the ability to control our will and our decisions. Whereas animals are led by instinct. So we know, dear listeners, our intentions are everything. If our intentions are to act in a behavior to prevent pregnancy from occurring because we are, as the spirits say, immersed in matter, then our behavior is not balanced. It's not in alignment with the divine thought and with our divine purpose. As the spirits tell us in question 693a, the answer, and we quote, the intelligent action of humankind is a counterbalance set by God among the forces of nature to reestablish their equilibrium. And we also learn that God already gives to the animals their own necessities to find balance in all of their actions. A self-regulatory system, if you will. But unfortunately, sometimes as human beings, we're still in this process of evolution, and we have, this, we have our free will, and we have great intelligence. Sometimes we fall off the beam path, and we tend to make mistakes and, and do things that are contrary to these very laws that are set up to help us as we stated earlier, to find our own happiness and to share that happiness with others. And we learn in the book, After the Storm, that psychographed by the Brazilian medium, Divaldo Pereira Franco, by the spirit Joanna de Angelis, she has a chapter that's entitled Contraceptives and talks all about family planning. And she tells us that we should be wise when we are planning our families, that we just we should not just go out and start reproducing irresponsibly because each one of us 
needs to be responsible for the offspring that we that we create and also to educate the children that we bring into this world. So the spirits aren't telling us go and procreate because if you if you try to prevent procreation you're going against the laws of God. That's not what they're saying here. They're saying use balance, don't abuse what God has given us. And let's always, if we're in doubt, let's utilize prayer to tune into the higher minds, to tune into our guardian angel or spirit guide, to find out if we are living in accordance with these divine laws and to really rebalance ourselves and to come back on track. So, dear friends, let us reflect with these thoughts. We always encourage you, go and read the Spirit's book. It is enlightening and it is inspiring. And as always, until next time, we wish you many blessings and very happy holidays. Welcome to our Yes! Youth Education in Spiritism with Gardec Radio. I am Bernadette Liao, and I'll be spending a few minutes with you, inspiring to bring spiritual awareness and Spiritist teachings to our youth, parents, and educators. Today we will continue talking about peace. In our previous shows, we answered the following two questions. How can conflict affect our inner peace? How can I help to improve and have a peaceful relationship with my teenage child? And today's question is, How can I teach my child to be a peacemaker? The best way to teach a child to be a peacemaker is by example. Parents should do their best to be a good role model in their children's lives. Peace starts at home, with parents not only teaching their children about peace, but also modeling it. And as a result, children will mirror and the society, what they have learned and experienced at home and through their relationships with the family members. When a child is showing a disruptive or aggressive behavior, feeling sad or is showing some signs of depression, he is actually manifesting to the outside world what he deeply feels inside. His spirit is not in peace and something is taking away his joy, just like a dark cloud that blocks the sun. So, before wanting a child to be a peacemaker, we should first observe and assess how the child feels, and if he has any issues that need to be addressed and which are taking away his inner peace. How can we expect a child to be a peacemaker if he is troubled? When your child is peaceful, this is a good time to talk about being a peacemaker. You can start by talking about feelings. Have a conversation with your child using examples that he can relate, or situations that he has been through which made him sad or happy. Ask how he felt in both situations. And by doing that, you are helping your child to compare the good and happy feelings to the sad or troubled ones. Once he realizes how good he feels when he is peaceful, you then can focus on how he can help others to feel better when they are sad or are dealing with conflict. Dear friends, We cannot expect a child to be a peacemaker or solve some type of conflict he is having without teaching him the tools to handle the problem. A young child, when dealing with conflict, needs a mediator. One technique used in some monastery schools is the peace table, and that can also be used at home. Here's what you do. Just set up a small table with two child-sized chairs. This table should not be used for anything else and should be away from working areas. Then place a rose on the table with a vase. 
when a child is feeling hurt or wronged and needs to talk to another child to solve the issue. He takes the piece of rose and says to the second child, I invite you to the peace table. Then both children sit at the table, and the one who invited and is holding the rose gets to speak first. They place the flower back and forth, talking about their feelings and what happened, speaking only when holding the flower. They will do this till they work things out or have come to some compromise. They are also learning to be good listeners when you are doing this. And when sitting at the table, they have to be polite and use their words to express how they feel. It is also very helpful to have an adult demonstrating and helping the children with ideas and words when they are learning how to use the peace table. Peace also involves compassion, being able to see our neighbor's pain or a conflictive situation and take action by bringing peace where there is chaos. Mahatma Gandhi once said, If we are to have real peace in the world, we will have to begin with the children. So, parents and educators, educate your children on peace. Read books about it. Do some role plays on conflict resolutions. Demonstrate how to act in a peaceful way. Teach your children to talk about their feelings when they are frustrated. Sing songs of joy and peace. Write about it and make some art. There is also a great website for parents and educators by Naomi Drew that gives helpful ideas and articles on how to be a peacemaker and teach children about peace. Just go to www.learningpeace.com It is also very important to surround your child with love and peace. And do not wait to schools or society teach him the moral values that he should be learning at home. Parents have a great responsibility in their children's upbringing. Chapter 14 of the Gospel According to Spiritism by Alan Kardec says, The care and education you give to this child will help in its improvement and future well-being. Remember that God will ask every mother and father, What have you done with the child who was entrusted to you? If the child went astray because of something you did or failed to do, your greatest punishment will be to see it suffer among other rebellious spirits, knowing that its future happiness rested at one time in your hands. Kardec Radio listeners, sadly, we still have so much violence and conflict among people in the world with serious and painful repercussions. There is violence and conflict around us, sometimes at places we go, at our workplace, and even within our families. And many of us choose not to do anything about it. It is as if we all became numb, and peace is just a word. No, peace is not just a word. Peace is a choice. And we cannot wait till someone does the job for us. We have to start now. And by doing that, our children will learn with us and become the instrument of peace that this world is so much in need. Thanks for listening to Yes 
And if you have any questions that would like us to answer in this segment, please email them to Kardec at kardecradio.com. And happy holidays. Dear listener, we hope you have enjoyed the program today. And we remind you that next week, when we come back for the Saturday programs, we are going to be here dedicating a whole program to the new year, to renew ourselves. It's about the path of renewal with Paul and Stephen, another novel written by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. And you can call in and join us in this beautiful proposal, our resolutions for the new year at a higher level, because we know those resolutions are not only about the temporary life, but mostly about our immortal lives. For now, we remind you as well that December 24th at 6 p.m., we'll be here at Kardec Radio Live, dedicating this program to the encounter with the Messiah. We're going to talk to you about the Messiah. We are going to share with you songs, visualizations, the very encounter with Jesus, with you. It's the holy night. So now, before we wrap it up, we'd like to share with you the very Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is explained in the Gospel according to Spiritism in chapter 28, a collection of Spiritist prayers in the very items. When Ellen Kardec goes through each and every verse and breaks it down in a much Spiritist way. For now, we're going to share with you. Let us pray and meditate. It's beyond the words. It's about the feelings, the intention. Our dear Father, Mother, who are in heaven, the heaven of our hearts, the heaven of our hopes. Blessed is your name. May we worship you in our actions, thoughts, words, and deeds. May your kingdom come to our daily lives, never forgetting our neighbors, never forgetting to begin again, always renewing ourselves. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your will of love and hope and compassion be done on the earth of our passions, substituting them by true virtues, because they are already there in the heaven of ourselves. And give us this day our daily bread. We need nourishment for our souls as much as for our body. So please help us find the nourishment that we need. Not that we are worried about it, because we know that you always care for all of us. Forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Forgive our offenses, as we forgive those who offend us. Because we know it's all about the law of action and reaction. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Because sometimes we need strength to resist the suggestions that come to us from evil thoughts, evil spirits, evil minds, so we can gain new strength and overcome the evil inside each one of us. And may all of this materialize itself, so be it. And we hope you enjoy these days and we'll be back with you in a few days. Remember, the message is all about hope, joy, and courage. Many blessings. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio. Broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.